Firstly, may I extend respects and greetings from the Labor opposition to the Mirra Aboriginal people, traditional owners of the township of Jabiru, which is the subject of this bill. And I do so as I acknowledge the traditional owners of this country, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people. Labor is happy to support this bill, which has been a long time coming for the Mirra. The effect of this bill will be to return ownership of Jabiru to the Mirra people and to allow for a community entity representing the Mirra to hold a lease over the town. Let me remind the Senate that it was a Labor government back in October 2009 which set this course of Mirra self-determination with an in-principle agreement for amendments to the Land Rights Act. And it was Labor leader Bill Shorten in January last year who committed a Labor government, which sadly didn't eventuate in May last year, to fund $220 million to improve the visitor experience in Kakadu National Park and to support the future development of Jabiru. Undoubtedly, it was knowledge of that commitment that spurred Prime Minister Morrison to commit similar funding for the same purposes. Labor is glad that a new Mirar community entity will be holding the head lease over Jabiru Township rather than the Commonwealth's Executive Director of Township Leasing, because that reflects the preference of Northern Territory land councils and traditional owners. Gunjakmi Aboriginal Corporation first presented a plan to, for Jabiru to become a service and tourism hub for the region in 2001. Even before that, in 2000, an agreement known as the Kakadu Charter was signed by Mira traditional owner Yvonne Margarula and then President of the Australian Conservation Foundation, Peter Garrett, to mark a path forward for Jabiru from uranium extraction to sustainable tourism and development. So 20 years on, today begins a new chapter for the Mira traditional owners. The Jabiru settlement sets an innovative and practical standard for Aboriginal-led regional economic development. The Mira and their team at the Gunjakmi Aboriginal Corporation are to be congratulated on their groundbreaking achievements. This history making is possible because of, first of all, the enduring and inspired commitment and hard work of the Mira people themselves, especially Mira senior traditional owner Yvonne Margarula and her next elder sister, Nida. The Mira have been ably served by tenacious and dedicated staff at the Gunjakmi Aboriginal Corporation and particularly their long-term expert legal adviser Susan O'Sullivan, who has worked tirelessly with the Mira for almost 20 years and is very much a driving force behind all of this. I'd also like to acknowledge Justin O'Brien, CEO of the Gunjakmi Aboriginal Corporation, you certainly did not want to be mentioned, but Justin, I couldn't help myself because you certainly deserve to be. This bill is about a future for Jabiru post mining, a future that is about local landowners making and realising their own plans. And there will soon be a head lease that provides security of tenure for the Mira to develop Jabiru. The town of Jabiru was built on Mira country in the 1980s without the consent of the traditional owners to service the needs of the Ranger uranium mine. The town and the mine are surrounded by Kakadu National Park, Aboriginal land which is leased to the Commonwealth's Director of National Parks. The Mira never wanted the Ranger mine or Jabiru township that goes with it. The good news for them is the Ranger uranium mine is set to cease operations in January 2021, and the Mira's vision to turn the mining town into a service and tourism hub for the region can be realised. And the Mira want the parliament to know that Jabiru is open for business. Kakadu is home to spectacular scenery, pristine environment and immense cultural value and should be shared with the world. Traditional owners want Kakadu to be at the top of the list for Australian and international visitors. The impact of COVID has been felt on tourism in the Northern Territory and that is obviously unavoidable in the current climate. But the Mira are ready to rebound to restore, this, uh, to restore this, the future of the World Heritage listed environmental and cultural site. This will require infrastructure investment from this federal government. Jabiru falls within the realm of the Northern Land Council, and I'm pleased to record the NLC support for this bill under CEO Marion Scringer. 
After the bill was introduced back in May this year, the NLC noted that it would allow for the transition of the township from a mining town to a regional service centre and tourism hub that would drive economic activity throughout the West Arnhem region. For many years, the Mirai people have been planning and looking forward to the shutdown of the Ranger Uranium Mine next year, and they have developed a comprehensive master plan that will transform the Jabiru economy from one that has been focused on mining and ancillary services to one based on the social, cultural and natural resource wealth of the region. I am also pleased to record the observations of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Human Rights, which has considered the human rights implications of this bill. The committee has reported that the bill engages various human rights embedded in international covenants. The right to enjoy and benefit from culture, the right to self-determination and the rights of equality and non-discrimination. Dealing with the Land Rights Act itself, the committee has noted that it promotes the right to enjoy and benefit from culture by recognising the Aboriginal system of land ownership by traditional owners and providing ways for them to own, control and use the resources of their land. By restoring Aboriginal land to the traditional owners, the Land Rights Act has enabled them to maintain and, in some cases, re-establish their cultural identity. They have withstood immense pressures from political and mining industry influences for so many decades, and their culture has remained strong and vibrant. Now, finally, they have the opportunity to chant their own destiny, to manage their own affairs and to prosper from their own endeavours. I know that the Mirar people have been looking forward with much anticipation to the passing of this legislation, and we on this side are happy for it to proceed without the need for further scrutiny by a Senate committee. In closing, Mr Acting Deputy President, I wish the Mirar people well in their future business. There's so much work ahead of you to realise the full potential that will be delivered by the passage of this bill. I'm sure you will achieve your aspirations for economic development, and I'm sure you will enjoy the goodwill of us all. Yo, bow your